I gotta, I gotta change things in this town to change what's, what's inside.
Fancy Hobo Improv presents a brand new show. The Bindle Variety Show featuring art, music, and improv. Tonight, we feature special guests, Amber Lynn with visual art. Music by Danny Burkhoff Hopkins. The lovable creations of Bob. And long form improvised comedy from Jose Orozco, Brennan Dwyer, Brandon Burns, and Natalie D'Amico. Hosted by Tony Tarico. So, so pack, pack up those, those bindles, bindles and, and enjoy, enjoy the show. show. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the premiere of our brand new show, The Bindle, a variety show featuring art, music, and improv. Thank you so, so much for being here tonight. I am your host for this show. My name is Tony Tarico. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here uh, live streaming on the interwebs. Uh, uh, and thank you for tuning in to the premiere of our brand new show. This is incredible. Uh, we, we, we really, really appreciate it. Um, tonight's show is going to go a little bit differently than most of our other shows that you see here on Fancy Hobo. Typically, we'll be doing improv all night long, but tonight is going to be a little bit different. We're going to add a little variety tonight. That's right. We have invited three incredible artists uh, to our show to talk about their work, showcase their work, uh, talk about their process, answer answer questions on how it relates to tonight's theme. Uh, it, we have time to take some audience questions as well. So if you have any questions for our guest artists tonight, uh, feel free to put them in the chat and they might get asked at some point in the show. And then after all we've, we've shared in all of this wonderful, incredible art, uh, we have a small group of improvisers that is going to create something brand new inspired by everything we've seen tonight. It's a really, really awesome, unique show and I'm so excited that you can and tune in to be here tonight. Um, uh, we want to remind you before we get things started, just like we usually do on every single one of our shows, please, please, please like this video and subscribe to our channel, whether you're watching on Twitch or on YouTube. That is the best way to support us. Um, we really, really appreciate uh, anything that uh, those likes, those subscribes and anything. But if you want to support us even more, you can donate. That's right. These shows are all uh, helped by be produced by you, the audience, through the generous donations that you have given us um, over the past years. So if you would like to donate to Fancy Hobo Improv, uh, you just head to Venmo and send those donations into at Fancy Hobo Improv. It is right down here on your screen. Um, uh, we really appreciate anything that you can uh, you can give at this time. All of these these uh, these shows they're produced by you. Um, and we thank those who have uh, generously donated. And if you donated, you get a shout out in the show, um, which is really really awesome. Um, uh, all right, I, I believe that is all that we need to go over for this show, let's get things started. And we're gonna get things started by inviting our improv players for this evening, our Motley crew. So please welcome to the show, Brandon Burns, Natalie D'Amico, Brennan Dwyer, and Jose Orozco. Hello, 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 players. Hello, hello. How are we doing this evening? Doing well, doing well. I'm incredibly excited. Good. I made popcorns. Good. <laughs> Good, good. I'm, we have our popcorn. We hope you have yours at home. Uh, players, tonight uh, we have a theme uh, that we're going to ask each guest artist about, but I thought now would be a really great time to talk uh, to you about the theme. And tonight's theme is community. Community is tonight's theme. Now, for me, community as an artist is, is everything. Right, uh, community, we love those applause. Uh, <laughs> um, community is uh, everything, right? It's the, it's the backbone of art in America. Since we don't have things like, you know, uh, um, uh, government support, we rely on our community to continue to support the arts 
in any way possible. Uh, uh, Fancy Hobo itself is a community. So I was interested in hearing from you, the players, what community means to you and what community means to you as an artist, as an improviser. Um, we're not just improvisers. A lot of us do many other things. So uh, let's start with, uh, let's start with Brandon. Yeah, um, I think community for me is kind of the, the people I rely on when the world is kind of pressing down. Um, I look back at like in any time, whether it be, I mean, high school to my first couple of years in college to the first time moving out of state, like whenever I felt like the world was too much, the community of like, especially my the theater community and the arts community, like it's always been those people that have been there to either just listen and offer advice or just to support. Uh, it's been a huge source of comfort in my life community um, that I think for a lot of the time I didn't have. Uh, growing up, especially in the difference between a sports community and an art community are vastly different mm. uh, in like competition versus sub, like supportive competition mm. uh, in a really, really, really interesting ways. Nice. Um, uh, Brennan, what about you? Uh, yeah, I think for me, I, I, I mean, community overlaps so much of what I do as a performer and a writer and a creator, uh, both in terms of thinking about I guess who I'm making art for, I mean, it's always for me, but it's also for an audience and like, who is that audience? Who am I directing it at? Um, but I'm, I'm most interested in like the community that makes art with me. As, as a performer, I, I, I don't thrive as a solo performer. I really love collaboration and with whoever might be working on that project, whether they're fellow performers or artists, designers, technicians in other ways. And um, I found it really fruitful to use those communities to start dreaming up structures that work better than the traditional ones that we uh, maybe grew up in school learning about, whether that's like art making structures, like here's the director, here's the stage manager, here's all the little guys down here, or if it's, uh, or if it's, you know, just political structures in the world. And so, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in, uh, in, in community sort of as a collective imagination, I guess. Hmm. Sounds hmm. kind of cheesy, but I actually believe it. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't sound cheesy at all. Like that specifically, that, that kind of definition of community definitely like resonates with me, especially right now in a time where we don't, we can't like physically be in a community around with each other. Um, we need that like kind of collective imagination, um, definitely. Uh, Jose, what about you? Uh, so for me, community kind of boils down to two things um, and that's safety and peace. So I think a true community brings you both. I think it um, it'll it'll bring you that sense of of your your fine, you're safe because these other people have your back, and they just do because they just do because that's just what it is for no other reason other than it, it, it is who they are. And then the the peace that that brings you because you can be safe but like maybe still anxious or maybe still scared, but I think a true community will also bring you that peace of mind that lets you just kind of be in, in a good place. Well said, well said. Uh, Natalie? Maybe this is like really primal, but I think about community in terms of like survival, like, you know, way back when, when we were first learning how to be humanoids, we had to do it in a group. Uh, I don't think anybody could exist alone there was no record of it. <laughs> so that means we had to have come from community. Um, and yeah, I, I miss my community right now. I miss, I miss actors. I miss the community that's my family. I miss the community that's <laughs> theater people. <laughs> I just, I just miss it because we, are, we really, um, we have it in this space but this space isn't the same as like actually being right. the There's, same, you know? So you're, we're, miss you're missing out on that important kinesthetic energy that lives within a community, especially when they're in the same uh, building room space. Um, 
Well, uh, players, we'll continue to kind of explore this theme for the night. Thank you. Like so many beautiful answers were coming out. Uh, players, we'll get back to you a little bit later in the evening. So sit tight, sit back, and enjoy these next guests. Like our first guest of the evening. Our first guest is a, a, a very old friend of mine. We've known each other for many, many years. And I am so excited for her to be our very first guest on the premiere show of The Bindle. Uh, um, uh, I have been around, I've been able to marvel at her art up close and now uh, uh, far away. So please, please welcome to the show, artist Amber Lynn. Hello, hello, Amber. Hi. <laughs> How are you? It's, it's, it's good. Like I, I mentioned this just before the show started, but it's so wonderful to be able to see you. <laughs> um, I, I feel like I haven't seen you in such a long time. Um, why don't you tell people at, at, uh, at home, tell them a little bit about your work. Tell them about what you do. Okay. Hi, I'm Amber Lynn. I'm a visual artist. I work in traditional and digital mediums. Um, <laughs> I believe in social justice and I'm like a little bit of a communist. But keep that on the down low. Don't, I don't have to keep it on the down low. Um, I care about just everybody and the universe and like what <laughs> what exists. Yeah. I care about what exists. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. We both um, we found. Uh, uh, for those who don't know, Amber and I have been friends for a very long time, and we found mutual interests in things like um, science, mm -hmm. space, uh, and and I think something that's really awesome about your work that I've always marveled at is the influence that that has on it. Um, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna take a look at some work, but do you maybe want to uh, talk a little bit about mm -hmm. your art and like what uh, what preview it for for our audience? What do you think? Okay, so my work all deals for the most part with mental illness. I myself was living with undiagnosed bipolar two disorder for like over 20 years. And uh, so uh, I wanted to talk a lot with my work about what it means to be dealing with this thing that you can't really express with your words, at least not in a way where people don't tell you like, oh, you're fine, you'll get over it, or people have it worse. Um, and I wanted to express that we are all one in the most part, that like in the grand scheme of things, all we can confirm is each other. And so we should support one another. That's beautifully put. And, um, and I think that is expressed really beautifully in your work. So why don't we uh, why don't we take a look at some of it, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see what I got. Let's take a look. So I'm going to flip things over so we can take a look at some of your work. And this is the first piece that I have. Why don't you talk a little bit about this piece? What's this piece called? This piece is called Sponch. S P O N C H. It stands for sul sulfur phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen. And these are all of the um, chemicals or, you know, that um, are the basic fundamental elements of life as we know it here on this planet. So although I am very, very interested in science and social justice, I really love I mean, like art, you know, I really love science and I really love space. And I wanted to go to school to be an astrobiologist because it's so important to me to find that life out there elsewhere in the universe to be like, hey, people, we're not alone. Let's, let's start like evolving as a society. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this represents all of the elements that are necessary for life. And then down here we have three planets, which are, uh, we've got Europa, Titan, and Enceladus, which are the three planets, technically natural satellites outside of our own that could possibly house life. Mm. So. 
it's incredible. This is, I, it's, I've, I've, uh, uh, it's just a, such a stunning piece. And it's, <laughs> it's so, it's got so much like emotion pouring out of it. Um, it's, it's really incredible. Um, let's, uh, shall we move on to your yeah, next one? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right. Yeah, this is a little bit about swords, the two of swords. So this is a tarot card that I was asked to design for the Light Gray Art Lab in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So it was a huge collaborative effort with, I don't know how many cards are there, 72 cards in a tarot deck, something like that. So there were 72 individual artists and I was chosen to, to do two of swords. Um, although I tend to focus more on science, I do think that there is um, something to these old traditions such as tarot or magic that we just, we don't have sci scientific um, tools to explain them, but it's a fun way to sort of communicate with those around you. Like, oh, like, look at this amethyst I got. Like, oh, did you know that that means clarity? I honestly don't know what it means. But in this piece, we have amethyst and another crystal. Anyway, it's supposed to be about balance. Nice, yeah. And I mean, that's the, I mean, that's the first thing that kind of, you know, uh, uh, speaks out to me um the uh, the the two swords obviously but then the two i love the 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 like perspective the two mountains in the distance um on on the beach or her hovering it's it's again just another amazing piece you're i i marvel at your work amber thank I really, you uh, i marvel at it sometimes too i'm like oh damn i did that <laughs> hell yeah hell yeah that's awesome uh, let's go to your, uh, let's go to your third piece. Tell us a little bit about this piece. Oh my God. If this pandemic isn't radicalizing everybody, I don't know what will. <laughs> like I am at the point of like, why are we not being like France? Why are we not burning things down? Mm. We can ask politely every single day, like, hey, Biden, can I get my $2,000? Um, or can we like go to their houses and like knock on their doors and be like, we are not leaving here until you take care of us, the people that you are supposed to take care of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why are you here if not for, so anyway, I like, I'm not, I'm not gonna be polite with like the other side anymore. Like I don't have to justify and nobody should have to justify basic human rights. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have polite conversations anymore. That is, I mean, that's fantastic to hear. And I think seeing your work kind of uh, has, has really evolved to be like more, way more outspokenly political. Um, and then it, it really makes me think a lot about how like art is so intrinsically tied to movements towards justice, movements about revolution. And um, I, I, it's, I mean, what kind of, what kind of, uh, I mean, you just talked a little bit about it because, you know, you, we're, we've reached this like point of no return where society's kind of been like, oh gosh, you just, just stop. We're stopping. We're, we're, we're not gonna be nice anymore. Um, and- Being uh, nice only it takes us more to the right. Being yeah. nice means that we are constantly having to sacrifice our goalpost. We are constantly compromising by being nice. And I, like, you know, and also being, somebody that was born female and raised female, like you are told to be nice. And mm -hmm. you know what? Like, I don't want to be nice. I don't want to be like in, like get out of somebody's way. You know, if someone's going to approach me on the sidewalk, I don't want to get out of their way anymore. You know, but like, hello, this is me. I don't have a billion dollars, but I still matter. Mm -hmm. oh. you're, you're speaking my language, Amber. <laughs> <laughs> you're speaking the language of the proletariat. So uh, thank you for doing that. And thank you for doing that through your work. Um, that is in the, in the piece, that is a, a, a what is a Molotov cocktail being thrown? It's tear gas. It's tear gas. Oh, that makes sense with the eye and the, and the, yes, yes, I see it now. Yeah, yeah, it's tear, yeah, I, yeah, it's tear gas. 
<laughs> amazing, amazing. Uh, and that kind of builds, I think this is a great time to build and move on to the final piece that we're gonna take a look at today. <laughs> it's so, it's so, uh, oh God, it's so adorable and wonderful. <laughs> this is my harvest guillotine. Mm -hmm. So it was done for draw, tober, inktober, whatever that, that, you know, you're supposed to exert your labor every day unpaid for 30 days so that you can like show your work and hopefully people will find you. I don't know. I don't get it, but it's fun to do. Yeah. And um, at the time, this is how I was feeling like, okay, like we're harvesting our pumpkins. We're setting everything up for Halloween. Let's go get Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and bring them down and we'll harvest them. <laughs> oh my God. I oh. love it. <laughs> I love it. I think it's so, uh, I think it's so awesome. I, uh, you have, uh, 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 and it might be just be the October theme, but there are, I've seen your work include some uh, bats sometimes. Yeah. You, made, uh, you made these little uh, bat patches. One of them is on the back of my jacket, one of my jean jackets that I wear. Um, my little bats, my little derpy bats. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. As a matter of fact, and let me turn back on my camera here, I found something that, just a little doodle that you oh, had no. drawn me forever, what feels like forever ago, maybe a long time ago when Fancy Hobo used to rehearse in a garage or in a, in a backyard. There's a little post-it note oh, of okay. a Fancy Hobo <laughs> with a bindle, might I say. <laughs> That is absolutely incredible. It's one of my favorite little things like you, uh, ha knowing so many artists, artists just like leave little doodles, things like that. And I love to just hoard that kind of stuff. I'm a hoarder when it comes to that. I'm like, I have to keep this, I have to put it in, in this goes on my fridge. Um, so I literally, while we were having this interview, I walked over to my fridge and I was like, wait a minute, it's gotta be here, right? Yes, there it is, it's right there. Um, oh, the biggest compliment. That's the biggest compliment, like keeping my little like, brain farts that come out of my fingers. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate your work. Oh, Tony. Uh, uh, so uh, I've, I've got a couple of questions before mm -hmm. we sort of wrap things up with you. Um, tonight's theme is community. Mm -hmm. So uh, what role does community play in your work, in your process? Um, yeah. Community is the most important thing. Um, one of the main reasons why I wanted to go to school originally to be an astrobiologist to find life was so that we could build a stronger community here at home on earth, where we understand that they are, we are all one being on this planet. Um, we all work in like this super cohesive manner and that's the most natural way to do it. And Carl Sagan, my all-time favorite human being of ever, um, in his pale blue dot speech had basically illustrated that like we're just tiny little nothings on a pixel, like part of a pixel. Mm -hmm. Like all we have is each other and we need to focus on what we have and not on like trying to make billions of dollars and you know like just trying to take care of one another use our resources for each other and uplift one another that's amazing it's a it's a beautiful that was a beautiful message of, of solidarity um which is so, you know like that's yes that's that's everything uh, you have a lot of appreciation in the in the chat um about your artwork um um, did people are asking, uh, did you make a whole tarot deck? No, unfortunately, no, no, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. lot of work. Um, no, I just was able to participate in a collaborative event put together by the light gray art lab. They're a part of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Okay. I applied and they liked my work enough to assign me a card. But doing something like a full tarot deck would be amazing one day, but I'd feel like a fraud because I don't fully understand it, but I'd like to know. I'd like to know more. Yeah, and I mean, uh, our, our fans in the chat definitely, they definitely want um, an Amberlynn tarot deck. So maybe, uh, maybe sometime soon. That's, uh, that's something we can, <laughs> uh, uh, we can hope to see from you. Um, 
question, where can we find more of your work? I'm scattered all over the place. Mm -hmm. Instead of having one cohesive Instagram, I have three. Woo. So you can find me, you can find my digital work um, on Instagram at Boozle is a cat. B-O-O-Z-L-E-I-S-A-C-A-T. Boozle is my cat. She is a cat. That is the screen name. <laughs> my other account for my traditional work is called Amber the Bird, which I don't need to spell out for you. I'm sure you, I, I've told it is, it is technically Right now it's streaming below us. Both oh, cool. Look at that. Amber the Bird. <laughs> and then um, I currently, I'm, get, I'm totally going to do this because another part of serving my community is I sew masks. Mm -hmm. So like I worked on like creating the perfect mask and I have to say I totally succeeded. Um, so my roommate, best friend, business partner and I are selling those and you can find those at rosycheeks.etc on Instagram. They're super cute. Yeah, that's where you can find me. I guess that's just Instagram. You can find me on Instagram. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, so we can all find this. We've linked um, uh, your Instagram accounts um, in the um, the details below this video. Uh, so if you want more uh, information about Amber or to support any of her work, um, to buy some of her masks, head straight there, and uh, and you can uh, you can check out all her work and support her. Amber, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Oh, anytime. This was fantastic. This is amazing. All right. Thank you very much. Everybody, put those uh, clap emojis in the chat for Amber Lynn. Thank you for being here, Amber. Thank you for having me. All right. Our next guest is someone who, if you have seen a fancy hobo show in person, you may recognize another artist that I have known for many, many years, um, one of Fancy Hobo's in-house accompanists, an incredible musician. Please welcome to the show, uh, oh gosh, Danny Burkoff Hopkins. <laughs> Danny, Danny, oh Danny, it's good to see you my friend, how are you? Uh, yeah, I get that. You know, I, I get that. <laughs> it's it's pandemic. I'm pandemic. Yeah, yeah, we're all there, my friend. But it's it's fantastic to see you. Um, it's, Likewise, it's been such a long time. You know, it the it just this whole year just feels like one bad day. So my my sense of time is very poor. Like in some ways, it feels like I haven't seen you in years, and in some ways, it feels like I saw you two days ago. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's it's yeah. Time is warping around us. It doesn't matter. It's a flat circle anyway. Right. <laughs> uh, um, uh, Danny. So you are uh, you work in music. I mean, you work with us in music. Tell uh, tell the audience at home watching the show uh, about your work. Uh, that's such a broad I know. question. I, <laughs> I'm going to be very cliche and say that, you know, music is me. I'm music. Mm -hmm. I can't do without it. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. I, it comes very naturally to me and it's always been a huge part of me. And uh, I don't know. I, no matter what I do, elsewhere i have to do music to wrap my head around whatever else i'm doing and i mean that's i i know you have like so many projects going <laughs> on uh you have so many projects you work um uh with us but outside of us you work uh you have multiple different music projects happening. Uh, you are the uh, a composer for a uh, podcast by Casey Whalen, podcasts by Casey mm -hmm. Whalen, yes. I, I've done, I, I mean, I did a whole bunch of incidental music for We're Alive, and then I did the whole soundtrack for We're Alive Lockdown, and then I did the whole soundtrack for We're Alive Gold Rush, and right now we're working on the next series, uh, 
totally different from the We're Alive universe, but I'm currently composing the next uh, show. I don't know if he's announced the name of it yet, so I, I don't want to say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, probably, probably best. But uh, we're going to be done in a few weeks, so it'll be released like within a, a few months, I think. Awesome. 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 That's, that's really exciting. Um, and uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, a music video. Um, uh, what project is uh, this song from? Uh, this is my newest one. Um, it's a black metal band that my best friend and I created just a couple months ago, um, you know, because pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's called Traumfieber, which is uh, German for fever dream. Mm. Um, and I she like about that. I, and and he, I was even wondering how to say it. I was like, what? Uh, my, <laughs> my, my best friend whose name, it, like we, we, as do many black metal artists, you know, we, we go by pseudonyms in the band. So she is Rat. I am Vol, and mm -hmm. our bass player is Roach. Ooh. Um, we we all chose we all chose our selected species, um, you know the the types of animals that uh, inhabit uh, environments after they've been destroyed. Mm. So the first things to come back: roaches, rats, vol vol. I just like voles because they're cute, but they're also rodents. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, she came up with that rat. <laughs> um, came up with the name Traumfieber because she speaks German and uh, she liked how the word Traum, meaning dream in German, also is spelled like trauma. Mm. And mm. it was all very, uh, very appropriate for how we've been feeling this last year. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, like it, it all just sounds so metal. Uh, <laughs> it's just the most metal metal and i love metal so it's it's uh this is this is a this is a delight um do you want to um what is this uh what do you want to talk about the song or do you want to talk about it after we we show it uh you know i just thought of this right now and i was like oh you know what the problem with black metal and how we have chosen to do our vocals is that you can't understand a goddamn thing we're saying of course so uh I was like, wait, is there a way we could post the lyrics after or before? Um, and if not, that's fine. Um, I can like, you know, I can verbalize some of them after, but. Uh, yeah, if you send them to me, I can put them in the chat. I'll put them in put them Zoom in chat, chat right now. There they are. Great, amazing, great. So um, let's take a look at the video and I will work on uh, putting these in there. Um, there, the video does come with a little bit of a trigger warning at the top of it. Yeah. Um, so there are some uh, some strong um, images that are happening in this video. So if uh, if that is not your your cup of tea, images of of um, it, it's it's quite intense. But I'm excited to share it with our guests. Uh, let's take a look at it now.
Woo woo. Uh, Danny, what, what a video. What a video. Um, uh, this, first of all, the song is badass. It sounds so good. Um, it really takes me back to like earlier, er, earlier days in my youth when I was uh, like super into metal. Um, uh, talk to me a little bit about the song. Uh, we, we posted some lyrics uh, in YouTube and Twitch. Uh, talk to us a little bit about it. Um, it, musically, it just came, uh, yeah, I, I was just trying a new thing because I'd started listening to more and more black metal and I liked the way that sounded. And then I've got, I've got so many other <laughs> projects that I was working on. And then when I wrote this, I was like, this doesn't fit in with any of them. So I asked my, uh, this is the first Trom Fibra song. So I asked my best friend, I'm like, hey, you want to make another band? Um, because we're also in our punk band together. Um, and she, of course, wanted to. So, um, uh, yeah, mu musically, it just came because I've been listening to so much black metal and just loving it. And also uh, the, the rawness of it and the fact that I am, I'm just done um, trying to be marketable or pretty or whatever because I've spent uh almost two decades of my life trying to make music that will get people to listen to it and it doesn't work so mm -hmm. fuck them um i'm just i don't i don't care if it's marketable anymore and i don't care if it sounds good to anyone really um and, but but you know there's there's a market for it thankfully but uh lyrically um yeah that came out of pandemic because m mostly based on how you know essential workers have been treated this whole time um and the way i mean you know the way soldiers are always treated and the way poor communities especially communities of color have always been treated and the queer community and blah 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 but the the absolute trigger for it was the you know frontline workers during the pandemic and how they were treated or, or rather how they were not treated mm, yeah <laughs> they were treated by lack of treating anything <laughs> yep I, I, I have too many friends um, who, who went through that experience. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and this was, this was uh, it. Uh, I'm sensing there, there's, there's themes popping up in, in a lot of the work where it's like, it's a period of, you know, there's a period of like making art that is, you know, whether it's marketable or whether it's nice. And then there's a, there's a, there's a breaking point <laughs> where a lot of artists reach it and they're like, you know what, it's now I'm, now I'm going to, uh you know just i'm gonna just do what i want to do there's so much like freedom and liberation and just just doing that um that's uh, i mean that's that also came because again of pandemic like there there was just way too much time on my hands to think about everything and everything that had happened to me and everything that was happening around me and realizing like you know I, there are certain things i want in my life and because of the society we live in, I need money to do it. Mm -hmm. And after this much time and effort spent on trying to make my art into something marketable and monetizing it, uh, I'm just like, you know what? I don't think that's ever going to happen. And I, I, I don't want to say like I gave up, but I gave up on that aspect of it. And like what you just said, that was really fucking liberating. Um, because now I'm beholden to nothing and nobody. And, you know, in, in, a, in a way that's sad and in a way that's been extremely freeing, like you said. Um, so, you know, now work and art have kind of split apart for me, which is, uh, you know, positive and negative. Yeah. yeah. But mostly positive. <laughs> And, and like you mentioned that a lot of the song inspiration comes from the way that, you know, essential workers are being kind of treated during the pandemic and things like that, which, you know, is uh, it kind of ties back into our theme of like community and the way communities, specific communities are being treated. Um, are there maybe perhaps other ways uh, that community plays a role in your process or your artwork? The weird thing, like I have a very complicated <laughs> history with community and so does my best friend, which is why we uh, are essentially like the two of us 
are essentially each other's community for the most part. Um, and, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't remember who's, who said it earlier in this broadcast, you know, talking about theater being the community. Um, and uh, when I was in high school, theater very much was my community. And then, uh, you know, the drama kids. <laughs> and then um, uh, when I got older and started trying to do college community and professional theater, I'm sorry, community college theater and then I did some professional theater um the backstabbing and the backstage uh gossipy shit like just drove me right the fuck out that door mm -hmm. and I never wanted to come back um although ironically certain people in that community are what brought me to the improv community so you know I found individuals within that community like I tend to do with every community and like I try to join a community whether it's a goth scene or whether it's this religion or that religion and, you know, I don't work in communities well, um, but I always find individuals. Um, and so like that's the, the fact that I am working with people on music or art of any kind is a step toward <laughs> community for me. Because like the, the music that you just heard, I did 100% of that except the bass line. Cause that's, I just don't work that well <laughs> with people, but through the, through recent, you know, bands with my friend, my punk band and my, uh, and this project, like I've learned to chill out a little bit and be a, be more of a team player. Um, and, uh, and, and again, because of the pandemic, you know, it's, it's made me, uh, I mean, essentially, I'm an anarchist now, and not in the sense that I think we should overthrow the state. I mean, maybe should is a good word, but we, <laughs> we're not gonna, is what I'm saying. Like, the people of the United States versus the United States military, you're, yo, oh, no. Um, there's, there's a problem with that, uh, that uh, the logic behind that. To say nothing of the fact that most of the citizens of the United States that are armed are not the ones we want taking control after the government gets overthrown. So I am not for overthrowing the government. Mm. But what I am saying in terms of anarchy is, uh, is mutual aid and doing everything we can essentially to undermine the, the, the government and corporate control over resources and you know, so we are feeding each other. We are healing each other. If we can do that. I mean, that's, that's what I think of when I think of anarchy now and, and yeah, pandemic has driven me to that because I've realized, wow. Yeah. I mean, I already knew the government was detached, but now I know just how little they care. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, and, and uh, again, like another theme just popping in uh, of everything we've heard so far is like this period uh, like you put lots of pressure on people and it just becomes a, there's a period of, of, of wild kind of radicalization yeah. uh, that, that happens. And um, yeah, I was a democratic socialist before pandemic. Now I'm a fucking anarchist. Like, no, you tipped, you tipped me. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, Danny, our, uh, uh, I love your work. Our audience loves your work. Um, so many people were saying how amazing it was and they loved it. It was powerful. Um, they love your aura. Uh, so like that's, and that's awesome. And we're, we're so lucky to have you um, as a part of the Fancy Hobo community. And I can't wait until that one day when we can finally get back on a stage yeah. and, and, and you're behind the set of keys and we get a chance to do some musical improv for everyone. Yes. Soon, soon, soon. But until that day, um, if any of our audience wants to uh, support your work, follow you, where can they do that? Uh, oh, so many places. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly, mostly. Uh, listed on the screen for you, as well as in the comments of, or in the details of this video, you can link there as well. But uh, you can, if you just want to list off a couple of places. There's uh, my most recent stuff with like this song, and we've got a few more is uh, traumfeverband.bandcamp.com. Uh, that's T R A U M F I E B E R band at bandcamp.com. Uh, but also, Pit is our punk band. That's P I T.bandcamp.com. 
And then just my name, DB, as in Danny Burkoff, dbhopkins.com is where I kind of just throw up everything that I uh, am up to for the most part. Yeah. Amazing. Danny Burkoff Hopkins, thank you so much for being here. It has been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, friend. Put those, put those, uh, put those little emoji hands together in the chat for our fantastic and wonderful, talented friend, Danny Burkoff Hopkins. All righty, friends. Uh, we are going to keep things rolling, but we are going to take a quick, quick break. So um, we will be right back in a few minutes. In the meanwhile, enjoy this lovely little commercial break. See you real soon. I gotta... I gotta change things in this town to change what's what's inside me, and and, and we're gonna start uh, with right here with you and me. All my life, I was told that I'm street trash, gutter junk, street urchin, and oh, I take it right on the chin. <laughs> Come on, don't you like kids? No. <laughs> Chipmunk cheek. That's me, and I've come with a certain proposition for y'all. So it seemed that this new gold vein that was a secret was not as much of a secret as any of the people who knew about it had originally thought. Let me remind you, Mr. Mayor, that you work in my pleasure. Because I own this town! Well, that's a tale for another time and another campfire. Do you miss the outside world? Do current affairs got you feeling blue? Do you spend hours wallowing around in self-pity, looking into the pit of despair and worrying that it is looking right back at you? Then you need the fancy hobo time machine! Don't just lay around like a bump on a log. And don't worry about those chores, they will be yesterday's problems! Hey you! Yeah you! Take this and escape today by launching into tomorrow! Our patented time machine is simple and easy to use. You don't need to be a dark brown with plutonium. Just use our simple chloroform formula. One spritz will do ya! Plug her in and you're ready to go! You just may want to sit down first. Simple, clean, and efficient. Let it carry you into the future. Eight hours later. It's the fancy hobo time machine, taking you away to the future. Only the future, yes, the future. But wait, there's more. Ever watch an episode of a good TV show and wish you could jump right to the next episode? Gone are the days of having to wait. Just a few hops in the time machine and you can binge like those fancy folk. Just be careful of overuse. Oops, <laughs> looks like he's gone too far. Enter a realm unlike your own. Filled with beauty and splendor. With magic and mystery. With evil and danger. With secrets and glory. Welcome to the world of hazards and hijinks. The cool adventurers! Despite my really calm, serene exterior, I'm a very angry person. If the cool leather boot fits, I'll wear it. I'm a cat person! You can't and judge I'm me! I'm a wizard who drinks paint! We are who we are! You will know what it is to feel pain. Hey guys! Hey! Hey guys! 
we just were upstairs in the gas chamber. Movement Hi. detected. Destroy intruder. Destroy oh, intruder. Sorry, I was living up to my own hype. <laughs> I feel younger than ever. Huzzah! Huzzah! Hazards and Hijinks. D&D Improv. Every Friday night on YouTube and Twitch. Welcome back to the Bindle. We are going to move right along to our next guest. Uh, I am so, so excited uh, to share the lovable creations of our next guest. Someone else that I have also known for many, many years, uh, that an artist that has left little doodles behind um, after hanging out with me in my home. Uh, and I'm so excited to bring the amount of, of joy that they typically bring into any space with them into our space here today. Please give it up for our next guest, Bomb. There we go. <laughs> Hello, Bomb, Bomb. How are you, Bomb? Hey, Cody. I, I'm good. I'm, I'm at home, uh, not going anywhere, and I'm just high, just high and just enjoying life. Good. Good. <laughs> as much as I possibly can in this weird bubble. Uh, oh, my gosh. Oh, Bomb, it's, it's good to see you. Um, for those who don't know, Bomb is, I mean, Bomb, you do so many different things. Um, I've gotten an opportunity to perform improv with you and, uh, like you're just a delight anywhere you go, bomb. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so for those of, uh, us at home who don't know much about you, why don't you talk uh, a little bit about your work? Yeah. So, um, I just, uh, I just do stuff that I want people to smile at and doing it with a group of people. And uh, uh, I do puppetry and uh, animation and just silly things. Just, just trying to make people smile. <laughs> and it's fucking hard. And a lot of times I think it's, I'm trying to make myself smile mm. just because I, I, I fucking can't handle a lot of things that I see. And it's, it's like I'm in my head going, just all the outrageous stuff. I and and I sometimes at night I'm just looking at Karen videos. I'm just looking at oh, no. Karens all over the place, <laughs> and I'm obsessed. I I've, I've watched uh, what was what were the uh, Karens in the wild? It's in YouTube, and it's just these people. And uh, sadly. Some of those people, like not that a lot of the people, like none of my family has, but they remind me of my family in Orange County. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I fucking know these people. I see these people. And uh, I, 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 I want to make people smile. <laughs> That's <laughs> because things fucking suck. Mm -hmm. Bomb, like what you what what you just expressed, like what what you what you what you want, what your passion is as an artist, reminds me so much of like my one of my personal heroes, um, Robin Williams, right? Uh, who his the only thing he ever wanted was to make people smile and laugh. That's it, and he could do it it's so flawlessly, and and you do it just as flawlessly, Bomb. Your your <laughs> you're the essence of joy. Um, uh, I I'm interested in um, in like what you're working on nowadays. Ah, uh, well, nowadays I'm working on a, a thing called unemployment. <laughs> ooh. Uh, ooh, it's very lucrative uh, right now. Uh, but no, I I had been working on a an animated show during the pandemic and it felt like this weird cocoon of that's all I was doing. Mm -hmm. And this is funny because it was for um, a streaming service called Quibi. Oh no, <laughs> Bomb. You were on a 
Maybe you should. If you know that word, stupid fucking thing. When I got onto the animated show, uh, uh, everyone thought it was a joke. Everyone was like, this isn't going to last. <laughs> it was like, if you wanted to, no one thought it would happen so soon. But every because they had that weird rotating thing with your your camera, and supposedly there's a huge lawsuit about who actually owns that rotation of your phone. That's a supposedly they stole it and they're being sued. It's all billions of dollars went into this asshole, this this place. This place. <laughs> right, right. Um, but it, it's funny because it it was. The thing was created by Jeff Katzenberg, who worked for Disney long ago, and he did DreamWorks. Mm -hmm. And he basically created this thing called Quibi with the CEO from eBay. She used to be the CEO with eBay, I think. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, and, and I think the premise of Quibi is that, like, we're going to do like content that is so short that anybody can watch it because, because the attention span of people is really, really low. When, like, I am the exact, like someone like me is like not the target audience for something like that. I like long, slow, dense art. <laughs> and, and that is not what, what the people wanted apparently. No, and Quibi like is so, you could tell that the people who made it have no clue how people consume media. Mm -hmm. They have no fucking clue. And they think, oh, because they look at the computer, their phone every day, they, they'll love this fucking thing. And uh-uh, because it, it sank and they blamed it on the pandemic, but it would have fucking failed even if there wasn't a pandemic. Right, yes, absolutely. And I, anyways, I worked on a show on that platform and it was called Your Daily Horoscope. And it was a horoscope daily meaning you got everyone, 12 episodes for each, like there was one episode for each sign every day. Oh, wow. And we, we, we would like, we were supposed to work in teams, uh -huh. <laughs> but because of the pandemic, we, everyone had an assigned character and they would do the odd or even of that episode and they would animate that episode, like that whole episode, all the characters, because they were like, like a minute, a minute to two minutes. Huh. And you're doing all the animation oh. at home while the world is falling apart. Yeah. And uh, when uh, uh, Black Lives Matter and George Floyd, and when that was all happening, getting nonstop alerts from your phone and going like, I wish I was out there and I'm in here working on this thing. and. And also, I do not want to go anywhere near COVID right now. Right. Uh, being someone who can, uh, health-wise, is not good. Um, but it was, it, it, uh, it, it, that's what I had been working on. And right. it broke me because you would, during a pandemic, it was, it was five days a week. And I would do 16 hour days, 16, sometimes even later. And I had my computer crash and I lost a whole scene of an episode. Oh. And it's usually like you have a minute episode, but sometimes you would get a 50 second scene that you would have to animate by yourself and the characters, because it really wasn't an animators type show. It's like Family Guy where the characters are just talking and talking and talking. So it's a long ass monologue. And I'm like, I have to fucking animate these long ass monologues. And it, it, uh, it was really insane. And it's, it just shows you the kind of labor and everything that goes into animation and is very collaborative. And when you're in home while the world is falling apart and it, you lose, you're like, hey, this is exciting, I'm doing this. And then it starts to drain out of you. Mm -hmm. But then trying to find those moments where you could put the joy back into it, because I fucking enjoyed it. I enjoyed the hell out of doing it. But at the same time, it was, it was daunting at times, because I knew 
that I'm in home waking up doing the same schedule every day. It felt like an insane asylum, you know, because what happened was we got the show and I got to start early because I was rigging a character, which basically we're using a, um, a uh, software in Adobe called Character Animator that basically uses a 2D puppet that you get to animate. So oh. you don't have to draw the character a bunch of times, but you can update the digital puppet in the software to have a hat or something like that. A lot of people use it on Twitch, uh, Character Animator. It's oh. a movie character animator. And they, they'll create a uh, image of themselves as a cartoon and then play video games, anything of that nature. But um, so it's a very simple program. So I started rigging the characters and I did that for two weeks. And then they came in and was like, we're probably going to go uh, into hiatus. And it was because of COVID. It was at the end of March. And then we waited for two weeks. And then on April 1st of all days, it actually happens. And then it was just work, 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 work until we the whole closure of Quibi happened because yeah. they wanted to save that money uh, that, that they kind of had to, its, to their investors. And we all got laid off. We at least got paid. But... Um, we had all signed contracts for a second season. Oh boy. And that was to happen in, um, that happened right when we got canceled. Cause we were originally, our contract was to end um, at the beginning of October, like October 10th. And then we, uh, the Quibi thing happened after a meeting, someone posted on Slack, hey, does this mean we don't have jobs in oh, no. the article? And that's how we all found out. Oh, we all no. found out on Slack by someone taking an article that someone else wrote about the announcement. No one knew. No one knew. And we were all in the frenzy because I was like, we're animating. <laughs> what do we do? And then a uh, couple of seconds, it was like, just turn in what you got and then we'll talk tomorrow. And it's like, yeah, don't do any work. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Um, and we basically were just archiving the show until we officially left. Like, like it was like two days, three days after it was officially announced because no one was getting any phone calls from Quibi. No one was getting any phone calls from Quibi, not even the showrunner, the heads of um, attention, because the whole thing, the way they were doing shows is they had all these companies that were producing the shows outside of Quibi. Quibi would fund the money, but they, they didn't have any involvement in the making of them, except giving them the money. Um, this and is the craziest shit I have heard in some time. It's fucking insane. And oh uh, anyways, but uh, it's a very long, long story. If you look up any articles about it, it's just crazy. My because God. anyways, I even, I, it was funny, like three days uh, before we got the announcement, um, I had a nervous breakdown. <laughs> because I had lost a whole episode and I only got a couple things saved and everything else I had to animate the next day. And I worked from late, like I did almost 24 hours and then had to wake up and start a new episode. And it was insane. And I, and, and I was like, I want this to end. I want this to end because we weren't getting any breaks. And the things about, the animation world, especially shows that that want to be pumped out so quick, they don't care about the people. You will break. And everyone I've talked to who has worked in the industry, friends and, and people on the show saying that they break people and they know they could get someone else to replace them like that until they're broken and they get another person. So it's, it's very- Same thing as that, that like really famous story about like Walt Disney making Snow White, right? He's making Snow White. All the animators are like, you're making us work way too long. There's no way that we're going to work here. We want to be paid a certain amount. We want to be paid overtime and we're only going to work so many hours. You either accept those terms or, you, or we're all going to walk out. And Walt Disney is like, you're all fired. Right, like I will, I'm, I'm just gonna rehire somebody else. So like, it's it's crazy how 
how many, I mean, and there's tons of stories out there about yeah. animators and labor abuse, like it's, whether it's, whether it's animation for movies and TV, whether it's um, uh, uh, designing for video games and things like that, like they just take advantage, so much advantage of them, of the- They, of, do. Uh, they of, do, and Walt Disney was notorious until they, uh, they tried to unionize and then they, they had a strike and uh, he was angry. He was like this, it was like Hearst and his cat, you know, like the, it was just this guy in his castle being upset that they're upset, but he's like, I give them everything. Right. And, and the people who try, uh, who start the unionization, the, the uh, he named them during the McCarthy era <laughs> oh. as communists. Walt Disney is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, but anyways, anyways, but yeah. Anyways, let's move, let's, why don't we move from the, uh, from labor abuses to something a little bit more joyful, shall we? We shall. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you um, had sent me a thing about, um, uh, I, and, I, and I looked this up. So you, you tell, tell me a little bit about uh, Socratica Kids. Yes. So Socratica Kids, um, I worked on with uh, really good friends of mine. Um, uh, and, and that's, uh, because you're, I know you're going to ask me a question about community, but I will say this, uh, Socratica Kids was very much a community because it was started by another channel, Socratica, and then they had, they teach, uh, Python, different, um, different computer language and software and programming. And they do a lot of international, they have, I think one in, they have a Portuguese channel um and uh yeah so they started a kids channel and uh a really good friend of mine cassie uh she basically was working on it and then asked if i wanted to come and you know uh have characters and puppets and and stuff uh and we worked on a video and and i met kim and michael who um brilliant people just brilliant uh michael uh worked at google and <laughs> just a computer software amazing guy and kim uh is amazing uh she was a teacher uh, i think she's studying biology and stuff and um just a very smart people i was also like every time i was there i was like i am too dumb for <laughs> <laughs> these people are freaking amazing but it doesn't but that but that's all like personal insecurities you know you you get all this like i but um and that's w one thing i find fun about being in the community is just getting rid of your insecurities and learning how to do that and socratic kids is very much was that uh and we put out educational videos um a uh, lot of animal videos uh puppets um and uh, some animation and stuff and and a lot of it was telling about what the solar eclipse is you know going to school um i i so i i uh i snagged a clip of it can we take a look at the clip of it yeah sure yeah okay uh so let uh let's take a look at a clip Hello there, kids, and welcome to the super fun puppet science spectacular show! Look at that thing spin, 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 spin! Ha ha ha! A show where we do super cool science stuff together! Oh ho ho ho! And we have a great show for you tonight. I'd like to welcome today's guest. We spare no expense. Actually, we don't spend any kind of expense. <laughs> a real life, bona fide Stegosaurus! Come on down. Da -da -da. Where is it? <laughs> All right, so uh, bomb. Uh, that's that's you. Yes, that's you doing the voice and the puppeteering. Yeah, that's me doing. Uh, that's Crump. Um, uh, <laughs> nope, I know Crump. I've, I've, oh I've, yeah, Crump. Uh, yeah, he's teaching kids. Uh, it's very fun. But yeah, no, uh, that's me puppeteering uh, the character. 
uh, it's fun doing the voice because I know a lot of people always confuse it with just voiceover, but you're doing everything there. You're basically like squeezed. I'm like in a box, like there's a box and I'm in the box and I'm like, have the puppet and then you got a, uh, a monitor that you're looking at that looks like a mirror. Like it's, you, you're trying to match it and, and I got the script and I'm reading it and doing that at the same time. It's weird. It's a weird multitasking brain thing. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like anytime I'm acting, it's like the same kind of thing of like, like, well, what, like, you know, you're moving, you're talking, you're walking into space, but then you're like, what, what the fuck am I doing with my hands? You know, yeah. like, it's, it's, it's crazy to like, to, to see you doing this. And I know uh, you're, you're one of a, a few puppeteers that I know um, that done it for, 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 you know, quite a long time now. Um, and uh, I mean, how, how much, like how, where did it all begin? How did the puppeteering begin? Um, it's funny. It's just from being a weirdo as a child and then a weirdo as an adult and taking things in Muppets, yes, but a lot of like stop motion animation, um, you know, Tim Burton stuff, every, you know, all the things that inspire a lot of people. A lot of people have been inspired by all this, this content that's available and it inspires people. And a lot of it that always is uh, there is, is, you know, being joyful and happy and silly and and the wonder, the magic of the world, the, the idea of that you're being introduced to the world as a kid, because you slowly, things are starting to make sense. You start out as one island of where you are in this world. You don't have any clue what it is. And then it slowly expands. It's, like, it's a video game. It's like playing Super Mario World and things just start expanding. The whole world keeps on building. And, and as a kid, it's I, I was a frightened child. I was a frightened of everything. I was scared of the labyrinth. I was scared of Hoggle when he would come in. And, and, and I think that's a lot of things too is, is um, I think too, like I'm, I'm very anxiety ridden and scared of just a lot of things. And I get very nervous and I try to be myself, but it's always, I think, one of the reasons why I like hiding behind the character is I don't, I don't know, I just never have liked just being me because I've always had a hard time being me. And, uh, and then I realize everyone does. Everyone fucking does. And, and it's such a beautiful thing, but it sucks because there's so much pain and and you want to bring yourself out and a lot of times for me it's just pu pu putting like doing a little doodle or doing something i know that will make someone smile i don't know what it will be maybe it won't make them smile but just the idea that something is there in the universe and they're able to just see it or or if they don't see it they hear someone else talk about it or or they themselves move on to other things. Because I, I honestly feel that educating yourself with so many different types of art form and so many movements that are going on, it's just knowing what exists in our time, uh, be it political, be it creative, be it anything. Because I, I, I I I feel like I was in this such a bubble for so long um, because being someone that never understood themselves, I got so stuck in the idea of myself. Oh, I can't be this way. I can't be that way. And it's nice to expand away from that because no one's really out to get you. <laughs> but there are people who do exist and it, it, you know, when it comes to government, things of that nature. And I'm like, I get so scared of being myself sometimes, which is I don't, of just being me, just being, because I always think everyone's trying to put roles upon you. And I know that just being a character, being a puppet and 
and or just an animation or even a doodle, just an extension of your gift to the universe at that moment to say, hey, things aren't that bad. Or, you know, it is bad, but let's get through this together. Um, I feel like a lot of times I stop myself from putting really emotional, uh, self-deprecating type of stuff in my work. And, and I, a lot of times I want to, but I get scared and I pull back. And I, I feel like I don't want to anymore. I just want to put, because a lot of times I don't like getting attached. I don't like the idea of getting attached to work sometimes, be it, be it a piece of art or something like that. Sometimes I feel like it's a gift to someone and that art exists within that viewer's uh, perception of that, that piece of art at that moment, be, be it anything. And I, I feel like I, in, even knowing you for so many years, Bob, I've received so many of those little gifts, um, whether it's one night you crashing in my apartment and me waking up to, and I have these like memories ingrained into my brain, Bob, uh, <laughs> waking up and finding a, there wasn't any pieces of paper for you to draw something on. So on a paper plate, you drew <laughs> a Homer Simpson that said, thanks for having me over on it. And it was just uh -huh. this lovely little, this lovely little welcoming gift that I woke up in the morning. I was like, bomb is gone, but there is a, there is a, there's this Homer Simpson left behind. And it's like, you are like the, you, you, you are so um, giving with your, with the joy that you bring into the world. So uh, I'm glad that we, you know, had the opportunity to like sit and, and chat for some time. Um, we, we do have to move on. You've got so much love in the Thank comments. you. Sorry. Yeah. Thank oh. you so much. Bomb, you've got so much love in the comments. People. Oh, love oh, in the comments. Oh, oh, hello people. I don't even know how to look at the comments. I feel so old or what they say. Oh, no, no. Well, if you go to YouTube or if you go to Twitch, there were, there were a bunch of comments. People, people. Oh, were, okay. There's a bunch of friends of ours watching. And awesome. All I love them all. Ella and Amber and uh, Danny, that was amazing. Sorry, sorry. I just want to say that was great. I haven't great. seen them in a long time. I feel so lucky that you three were the first three artists um, uh, that we, I feel so lucky that we were able to have you three uh, because like you're all friends of mine, you and, and you know each other. And it was just really fun and awesome to be able to like share these moments. Um, before we move on, uh, tell uh, our our folks at home, uh, where can they find your work if they want to support you? Yeah, um, so with Socratica Kids, uh, you go to YouTube, just put in Socratica Kids, um, and it'll come up. You'll see puppets and little things like that, and that should be right. Uh, my Instagram, I don't really update as much. Uh, I feel like after uh, uh, some uh, really horrible people are slowly being considered as never existing, um, I feel like going on social media again, slowly and surely, but, um, but, uh, it's, uh, at wizard bomb on, uh, Instagram. Perfect. And we've got that linked, um, in the details in this video, and you can check that out on your screen. Bomb, you are a delight. Uh, <laughs> anytime I get, it's so good to see you. yes, it's so good to see you. We've got to spend more time together. Um, Bomb, thank you for coming on to today's show. Uh, give, give, those, give those applause emojis for Bomb, everybody. All right. So we, uh, uh, we've, we've met with all three of our guests. It's time to do just a little bit of improv, shall we? So I need our improvisers to get on in here. Come on in here. We got Brandon, Jose, Brennan, and Natalie. We are going to create a 20-minute set all based off of a bunch of things we saw. And you know what, players, today, you know what I saw a lot of? Awakening. I saw a lot of like awakening and just like like a snap to realization, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. The awakening definitely gives me a sense of like peace. Mm, mm -hmm. Peace, peace, but power. It was a like a, a driving peace. It was like it was also it was a lot about finding like internal power and like resilience and ex and expression of that certainty within. Uh, resilience whenever I think of resilience I think of like a big tree because a tree can just kind of withstand all the weather and we learn a lot from trees you guys yeah yeah uh, uh, tree wise 
why is a deep why is education? Mm. Mm. What was the word? Education. Education. Uh, hormones. Hormones awakening. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, awakening, like new experiences, uh, naivety. Mm. Naivety, fear. Uh, isolation. Doubt. I think growing up, I was raised with a lot of doubt, a lot of doubt and isolation. I think it's one of those things when for me, I grew I was, I grew up in Orange County, but I was this five foot two, like chubby little kid who had the voice of a freaking soprano. And I grew up always kind of recognizing that I didn't fit in in the communities that I was a part of. I grew up in sport communities, uh, playing football and lacrosse and basketball. And I wasn't in them. I was in them, but I was always on the sideline in a way, uh, kind of meant to believe that I shouldn't be in them. I shouldn't be a part of them. Uh, even though I would try to bust through a wall, I was always punching back constantly. And I look back at those days and I, there's this sense of me wanting to kind of shake that kid, shake him until like, I can write, tell him like, this isn't the place you should be. It's just doing more damage. It's just hurting you, hurting you further. But I think you, I wanted to believe that gender role, that that's the community I had to be a part of. I had to be a part of a sport community because that's what you're told growing up, a, a a guy is supposed to play football. He's supposed to want to be with the boys. I want to. I want to play with. The, I want to do that. I want to fight. I want to punch. I want to. I want to live in that society. What are you doing here? What are you doing here, man? Okay. All right. All right. Don't don't razz me too hard. I'm not trying to razz you, bro. But I'm just saying. You know, there's another way. I'll believe it when I see it. Well, look no further. What the hell? Join the checkers team. You can come play checkers. You don't have to play football anymore. You know I haven't played checkers since my grandpa died. Look, I know, and I know losing your grandpa pop was hard, but he would want you to do this. He would. He would want you to get back out there in something that brings you joy and not pain. After Pop Pop taught me how to play, you know, I, I, I got that horrible addiction to drugs. Then I became the world champion checkers player. But it, no, I can't go back. I miss your haircut you used to have then. It was short and red. Yeah, it was hot, right? Yeah, it looked really hot, really yeah. sexy actually. <laughs> but no more. This is by far the hottest chili I have ever made in my entire life. Well, man, you know my, you know my palate's pretty broke. And I like, know that, that's why I called you. I'm ready to test it. Yeah, man, if this chili can make me sweat, I'm gonna tell you right now, dude, you might have some hot chili. <laughs> All I right. think I have some hot chili. I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. But I'm gonna give it a go, okay? I'm gonna give it a little, I'm gonna give it a little taste. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Tell me it's a winner. Please tell me it's a winner. Yeah? Yeah? Are you sweating? Please tell me there's sweat coming out of your sweet little pores. Man, I gotta tell you, man, that chili, that's some hot chili, dude. <laughs> oh, Grant, Grant, I don't think you understand, Grant. That's like a hot chili. Right, yeah, no, I'm stoked on it, man. No, I know, Grant, I'm tired of that. Is hey, I heard there was some chili in the break room. <laughs> no, obviously, obviously, you know what I mean? In the pot, it's in the pot. Oh, I'll try some, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Uh 
I guess we're the first ones back. I guess so. Looks like a wasteland out there. What do you think was going to change? Just six months was going to make everything different? Thought there was a chance? No, I got to commend you for having hope. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it was foolish. Maybe I should have prepared better for a, uh, for this. What I don't know. What's the opposite of hope? Reality. Yeah. We knew the clowns were coming. All right. Oh, they came all right. Yeah. Swept through this place. I've never seen so many people just fall to their knees laughing until they'll never be the same again no look at them N nothing will ever bring them such joy again just locked in their homes surviving on memories and and, and those memories only degrade and erode as, as time ticks on and, and those, those clowns are halfway across the globe by now, infecting some other community with their horrific comedic shenanigans. Do you hear what happened in France? What happened in France? The mimes. No. No. It was like, I heard it was like 7 p.m. and the mimes just, it's like they came out from the sewers just the people said they've never seen so many invisible walls and boxes just being built in the middle of the street. Cars hitting nothing. It makes me feel claustrophobic just to think about it. I mean, how are we so If we go outside, we could, we, could, we could just be in an invisible box. I could run into a wall right now. I mean, it could happen. Don't say, you can't say that, okay? Because if you say that, that means the mimes are here. And if they're here, we have nothing. Maybe they're already here. You can't say that. You can't say that. Because I don't know. Mr. Pesos. Yes. Hey, could you calm down here? To what do I owe the pleasure to come down there for? Um, just, no, not, not the much. You know, there's like, there's like a couple hundred thousand friends who just wanted to like, you know, come up to your door and, and maybe like you could come down and hang out with us, Mr. Bezos. No, no, no. Um, Jeff Bezos likes to stay alone in his house. Um, why don't you go and frolic in the woods? Um, well, we just came from the woods and, you know, we cut down a couple trees and we made- Oh, good. I like that, I think. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, we only cut down a couple of them, only used the resources that we needed and uh, we, we built you something. Oh, whoa, hold on. You didn't exploit them? No, oh. no. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bezos, uh, we got a couple different presents and, and treats for you. Yeah. Some a lot of people on my lawn, yes? What can I do for you? Oh, well, no, I'm with, I'm with him. I'm with we're him. Friends. Yeah, we're friends. We're all, we're a part of the same percentile group and we're just here with some presents, a couple loaves of bread and a, a new machine, a new invention of his. An mm -hmm. old invention, but a new one. I'm here on Jeff Bezos' lawn and it is infiltrated with communists. They are everywhere and I, Hey, smile, smile over here, red hey, commie. Come on. Hey, is, is this another, is this Karen? Don't Karen, you dare call Karen, me that. Karen, Karen, hold off. Karen, hold off. Don't you dare off. call me that. Don't Karen, you dare. Karen, it's your, it's your legal name. So just calm down. I can't handle this. I feel Karen. threatened. I feel Karen, threatened. I'm calling the police. Okay. Oh, I'm not worried about you guys because you're just a little bit communist, not totally communist. I'm sorry, but we cannot officially change Karen into a slur that is designated for actual slurs for actual marginalized groups of people and community. Okay, you should have seen 
what this mob was doing to me. They were charging me like a herd of wild rhinos. They Man, were- I saw the video that you yourself posted to Facebook. It went viral. Horrendous, you isn't it? Clearly, you were clearly instigating it then. Instigating, I was doing my civic duty to document the atrocities of what this country is becoming. Thank you, everybody. Okay, for okay. Let's Thank see. you for coming to the Care and Support Group. I really appreciate everybody being here today. Um, I need to just like put out there like the general like knowingness of we are not alone. We are not alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I hope we're not alone because right now I feel like when I go on the street, I'm on my own. I'm the only one got a mask on. That's for sure. I mean, what's up with that? What is up with that? The sky. That was a good one. That, <laughs> that was a good one. You nailed that joke. Karen, stop. No, you stop, Karen, you stop. Karen, what's up? What's up with the face, Karen? What's up with the screen? My face! Well, you always, I'm tired of you looking up and setting these meetings, all right? This is a place Karen, where you're supposed to- wrong? I was born like that. God damn. You? It looks like someone stepped on the top of your head and then scrunched it. Stop it, Karen. You're you're hurting my feelings. Oh, am I, Karen? Am I? You know what? Guys, you know what? I'm out of here. Guys. I will see you at the homeowners association meeting. Oh, uh, not if I see you there first. God, she left. <sighs> Karen, oh, this happens every meeting. Well, it, it wouldn't happen if she changed her face. All right. She's making me upset. Her face is making me upset. I don't know why she just won't change her face. It's simple. Karen, why don't you try changing your attitude? Okay, don't you be like just any one of them, all right? You sound like everybody else. So I, I fucking hate Karens. I think Karens are fucking terrible. I think they're stupid. And I have, I have dealt with so many of them in my entire <laughs> life because I worked a lot in the food service industry. And when you work in that industry uh, or any service industry, they are everywhere. They're, they're everywhere. They think they're entitled to absolutely everything. And it's disgusting. Um, uh, particularly, I worked at Starbucks for many, 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 many years. And there's a lot of Karens who love, 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 love coming into Starbucks. And the funny thing that I think is interesting is watching how Karen a person can be and the complexity of their Starbucks drink. And, you know, if a person, sometimes they were really, really nice, easygoing people. And those people got really simple drinks. They'd be like, give me a latte or something. But then like a Karen would come in and uh, she would order a venti iced with uh, like peppermint mocha latte with two pumps of peppermint and uh, soy milk and, but, and half whipped cream with caramel and toffee nut inside of it. And it, it, it just blows my mind how many times like the 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 core the direct correlation between like their drink and the Karen. Hi sharks. I have recognized a problem here in the United States of America. Do you recognize how people's drink orders are getting more complicated? Well, my company Whiplash Foods has devised a brand new process of revolutionizing the food industry. Whiplash that's the one. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of the complicated food orders that you get at home and you put it into an app and it it, it hits it on on a on a on a on a government uh, technological system and it puts it into a database and No oh, no 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 I ain't trusting no government with my drink order and I ain't got no fancy smartphone to be using no fancy fancy apps. Well, don't you worry, because we're also an offline company. What all you Whiplash. have- Whiplash! Whiplash! 
All you have to do is you you write down what you get and you mail it to a discreet location in the middle of the Sahari Desert where a local boy goes and picks it up every other day on an undisclosed date so you can track his movements. And then it's brought to a different carrier where it's shipped by boat across the Atlantic Ocean where it meets a new boy who picks it up from the harbor and delivers it right to my door and I put it into Whip my- ass. I'm interested in this because it supports the post office as well. And I do think that that's um, a community that we really should be investing in. So I'm interested in that. Could you tell me more about the boy? Who's the boy? Oh, the boy, his name, his name, I'm going to not tell you his real name, but his name is Gerald, he's 11 years old. He doesn't have any shoes, but oh. we just kind of found him by the road and we said, yeah. Pull up the the corner. yeah, what's going on? Listen, I just, I just need, I just need a number. How about 10 shares okay. of 20% over a quarter gross in two years? Okay. Would you uh, are you gonna put some money on that deal or you just want some like company? How about these numbers? Ooh, more One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do, do. <laughs> <laughs> that brings Mr. Hey. What's up? Hey. What? Come here. I'm here. Come, come closer. You're okay, fine. Give me a second, dude. What's up? Yeah, hold on. Oh, yeah, hold on. Hold on. Let me get close. Get, get, get. Well, if you're gonna get closer, I'm gonna get closer. If you're gonna get closer, then I'm gonna get as close as I possibly can. Well, that's what you think. I can get even closer, dude. Get closer than this. What's up? What's up? I fucking love you, bro. I fucking love you, bro. What? Bro? Yeah. Hey, hey, bro. Yeah. Close your eyes, bro. Close my eyes. Close your eyes, bro. But it, okay. You see how you don't see anything? Yeah. That's my life without you, bro. You fucking, fucking stupid. I Bro, you it. stupid. No, I'm not. I'm not what? No, me. like, like stupid, like stupid, beautiful. I, I fucking love you, bro. Hey, I fucking love you. Oh, mm, this is stupid good. This is stupid good. I've definitely had better ramen before. I don't know. Come on. Mom made it from scratch. Come on. I think it's in the middle, honestly. I've had better, I've had worse. What are we, the freaking three Goldie Bears? Come on, Mom, hey, this hey, is hey. good, Mom. I've got an idea. Yeah? Let's do a food tasting show like... where the three of us. Okay, listen. Man, I had this, I came up with this idea last night, all right? It's crazy, okay, it's crazy. It's crazy, 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 crazy. We do, we do a five minute long cooking show. There's three people, they're on six different screens. We split their faces and it's broadcasted on a semi-vertical basis. I love that semi-vertical, I love that. Okay, I've got, I've got an idea, I've got a great idea. Okay, in five minutes, in five minutes, we are going to build an army and invade an unknowing nation. Five minute show, and then at the end of the show, people get to vote on if we withdraw or keep the troops in. Oh my God, thank God we're English, because this yeah. is right up our alley. Five, five minute idea, I have a five minute <laughs> idea. I have a five minute idea where it's a whole person's lifetime, but it's backwards. So it's like Benjamin Button in five minutes. You start in old age and then you move from going old age all the way back through your adolescence. And then we, we really go back all the way to the womb. So when I was younger, uh, I used to think that my brother never really cared about me too much other than the fact that we were family, right? It was, it was actually really depressing. And so um, when we were older, we actually kind of started hanging out a little more. And I remember once he took me to a party at a motel and we were there with a bunch of his friends and it was just like, it was kind of a seedy environment, um, but it was cool because, you know, it never really happened before. I never really got a chance to hang out with him like that. And so when we went, um, it was it was all right. He introduced me to everyone and it seemed all right. And um, a few hours in, he just grabbed me and he says, hey, we gotta go. 
and he was very serious and I was I was like okay yeah of course um let's go and so we went and as soon as we got in the car to leave he says hey sorry if that was kind of weird um but there was there was just this guy smoking meth in the corner and I just didn't want you around that and it seems kind of weird but like for me that was it was like no matter what at the end of the day he'd keep me safe I can't apologize enough for uh, everything. <clears throat> okay. But um, I know it's been a while since we talked um, and you know, my mistakes are my mistakes. And what I did, I mean, it's not something that I'm asking you to forgive me for, but I, I guess I, I guess I just wanted to um, just I just wanted to say I'm sorry for I guess everything. All right. Well, I guess that's something I didn't necessarily expect to hear that. So um, I don't yeah. know if I'm ready to say like it's all good. Forgive you. Um, I, you don't, I don't, you don't have to, um, and I'm not expecting you to, and I don't really think I should get it. But I guess I do want to say that even if I'm not there yet, um, you will always be my brother and nothing can take that away. Um, uh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, you're, I don't know why you're even calling me my brother, your brother, um, that I wasn't expecting, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, I should have put that on silent, um. It's okay. Well, hey, uh, if you're ever you're ever back home. Uh, I'd love to get coffee with you sometime. Yeah, I think I might be uh, heading back in uh, March if it's safe. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I hope you're, I hope you're happy. I'm, uh, I don't know about happy, but I'm uh, I'm me, you know, and 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 that's uh, that's something I couldn't get at home. So I'm glad you can be. I'm glad you are. Yeah. Thanks. Well, hey, I know uh, you got a lot of work to do, so I'm gonna I'll get out of your hair. Uh, but, uh, thanks. Thanks for the call. I mean, I uh, wasn't expecting to see see your name pop up today. So yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it was a, uh, a little bit of a uh, nice little Saturday surprise, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, it was a nice surprise. So. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I guess I'll. Uh, Maybe I'll talk to you in March. Yeah, maybe. Um, I love you, sis. Love you too. Bye. And that, my friends, is going to be our show for the evening. Thank you so much for tuning into tonight's premiere of the Bindle Variety Show Art, Music, 
and improv. I hope tonight was something a little bit different that you didn't typically normally saw. Thank you so much for tuning into our premiere. Thank you to our guests. Let's get everybody who was a part of tonight's show on in here. Turn on your videos, come into the digital space. Uh, thank you so much, Danny. Thank you, Bomb with the cat. Uh, thank you, Amber. Thank you, Natalie, Brandon, Jose, and Brennan. Um, uh, uh, we've had a, a really incredible time. We hope you had an incredible time. The Bindle will be back at the last Saturday of every month. We get a chance to do something unique and special uh, and, and a little bit thought-provoking. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to be able to bring you this show. Thanks for tuning in. Um, uh, be sure and like and subscribe to our channels. Um, you can still donate. Send any donations you'd like to at Fancy Hobo Venmo. We have lots of information about our guest artists. Again, inside the comments and in the, in the or in the details of the video, um, and you'll also see some more information about them coming up in the credits. Thank you all. Thank all of the players. Thanks everybody. Thanks for tuning in at home. Until next time, Fancy Hobo signing off. Bye everybody. That was an intense ending for the show, um, but it was really great. It was really great. Well, I felt like it was, in, it, there, were, there was a lot of real stuff that came up tonight and it felt important to like honor that. Definitely. Uh, the, apparently the audio was echoing a lot, Tyler. Fucking Tyler. <laughs>